Sunday experience online. And shout out to all the community groups tuning in all around Berlin right now. Why don't you say hi in the chat? What I love about community groups is that we get to enjoy the service together, we get to bring our friends, we get to talk about the message, and that we get to pray with each other. If you want to join one next week, please let us know. It's actually super easy. You can send us a message in the chat or DM Hillsong Berlin on Instagram, and we can help you find one near you. Okay, I don't know about you, but I am so excited for today. I want to encourage all of us to be expectant for what God is going to do today, wherever we are. So let's lean in together. Hey church, you know God inhabits the praises of his people. Wherever you are, with one faith, one heart, why don't we worship God today? Come on.
beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus
welcome. Hola. We love that you're here. Hola, good morning. We love that you are here. You know, we love that we can come into your living room. We love that we can share these moments together of praise and worship. How powerful when so the church praises together, right? And you know, like we're just declaring right now, where there's no way, you made come a way. On. I love that. And I love that God promises are, are, are yes and amen, amen. And He's faithful to His word. So in a moment, we're going to pray for people's needs. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for your family and friends. So, you know, maybe right now you are watching or being part of this service in one of the locations. We love that you are there with friends and family, but maybe you are right now with just with your family or by your own. So wherever you find yourself right now, I believe God's presence is gonna come into your place. It's gonna Amen. be tangible and you're gonna see breakthroughs in your life. You're gonna see his, you know, you're gonna see his goodness. And you know, that's what we believe in. We're praying, standing here together with you in prayer. And I love what today represents. It's Jesus and His church, united, meeting Amen. together all across the city and online, you know, in Berlin and beyond and really united in purpose, united in vision, united Amen. in spirit. So come on, would you join in prayer? Let's yes. pray together. You want to pray, Sheila? Let's do it. Thank come you, on. Jesus. Lord, we just lift up the needs of every single one of your yeah. children, Father. We are praying for the next generation. Every week we are committed to pray for the next generation and sisterhood. We're praying for salvation for family and friends. We're praying for healing from cancer. We are praying for freedom from fear and depression. In Jesus' name, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Amen. And we are Amen. praying for jobs and new apartments. Lord, we lift up every single need to you and we know that you are already gone ahead of us. We thank you already. We praise you in advance in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, so we also want to celebrate what God is doing in people's lives. And we've been receiving so many good reports in this season. And I just want to highlight a few of them. Like people so are thanking God for water baptism. Yay. Congratulations. You know, like if that's you, it's a great decision. I think it's a life-defining decision, especially Absolutely. like if you want to move your life forward and you walk with Christ. I think it's what about this is life defining. Yes. And you know, maybe you're watching right now and you want to know more about it. Yeah. You can write in the chat. You can even ask through social media, ask through the website, and we'd love to get in contact with you. We'd love to help you. Um, look at this, Sheila. Someone is thanking God for a new apartment with a great flatmate. Awesome. How cool is that? You know, it's a two good reports in one. That and you know, this one also, we have someone thanking God for being accepted for a master's program. And I know that's from my friend so uh, Sebastian, you know, and I love that God is really Champion. opening that door for you. It's actually was a difficult master's program that is difficult yeah. to get in. Yeah. And I love how much that means for that person. Come on. And I love that um, someone's thanking God for a permanent visa. That's also one of the things that we're receiving every week, yeah. prayer requests. So that's so good to see how God is answering the prayers request. And I love this one. Someone is thanking God for a great team night. You know, I love that one. We, we got together as a team on Tuesday night, just over Zoom, and I love that we have all these different yeah. people coming in, everyone from all different teams that we have as a church serving. You know, I have something so attractive about serving on so team. Much fun. I love, I don't know if you know, but <laughs> <laughs> to put on, to put out this, to put on this uh, Sunday experience, yeah. the Sunday service, look at the team here, it's behind the cameras, behind the laptops, doing yay! <laughs> <laughs> you know, but really, I'm thankful for every single one of them. No matter what season we are in, yeah. we find a way of making it about others. You know, it's others focus. It's, it's an honor and a privilege to be part of lifting the lives of others. And that's something also I love about our, about our church. Our church is when Jesus is at the center, yes. we move from being me focused to us focus. And that's something so powerful to see because it makes it so attractive to our city and impacting. And you know, this month we're going to take more time to talk about the church. Pastor Mark is going to be kicking off today with a great message, bringing God's word. But before that, Sheila, you wanted to bring your, you brought your book here. We've been reading this book together and it's quite, it's really good. It's really powerful. And it's been super helpful for yeah. both of us. Yeah, it's been such a blessing. So we've been reading this through community, God, Money and Me from Paul De Jong. And definitely it's been mind blowing for us just to actually put some more time and, and growing in this area, applying godly, uh, yeah. financial pr financial principles. Yeah. Um, so I, just, I don't know if you know, but we have lots of resources in our website, the seven principles on tithing, the seven things about giving, and this is gonna be a great blessing of you if you wanna grow in this area. Um, but I would like to encourage us today from, from 
the Bible, in 2 Corinthians 8, 9, 8, it says, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things and at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. Yeah, so How powerful is that to know that we are blessed to be a blessing. And especially in this season of Heart yeah. for the House, actually, I want to grow. I want to see my life moving forward in this area. I would like to read for you this from the book. It says, when the purposes of the King, our God, Jesus, are the base of who we are, we become recipients of the Kingdom. And that's what we're believing for, that we will, we will become recipients of the Kingdom so we can be a blessing to others. Come on. Amen. So, yeah. Do you want to pray? Uh, absolutely. You know, let's, let's, as we prepare for the giving, and let's believe that we're going to be part of moving God's Kingdom forward. Amen. His church in this city and beyond. Yes. Father, I just thank you for every single person that is trusting you right now with this area of their lives. I thank you that as a church, we're going to be moving forward and we're going to be taking new ground for Berlin and beyond. Because of the faithfulness of your people, we're going to see bigger things that we could never imagine. And when it comes to seeing the next generation taking new ground, amen. in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So good. So Sheila, tell us a bit about the practicals. Yes. I think we haven't mentioned them, but it's different ways that you can be part of this moment. Yes. So, so you can give with the app. So we plan our giving, but we fight over who pressed the, the, the button. But the giving app has been such a blessing. It's super easy to use. Yeah. We have Easy Card and we have PayPal. Yeah, I think it's so good what you said also with planning our giving, you know, yeah. because that helps us so much, especially right now that we are uh, online, helps us so much to bring expectation to this moment. And I would love to encourage you, if you are there right now, that you would love to yeah. plan. I think that makes a massive difference. Yeah. And, you know, like even right now, this season, what you just mentioned, leading yeah. up to Heart yeah. for the House. 18th of October is a Heart for the House. And you know, maybe you've been part of it last year, so maybe it's your first time. But for us personally, we've seen our lives moving forward every year. You know, we've seen our trust growing, we've seen our expectation growing, we've seen our life moving forward. And you know, as we lead up to it, we'd love to encourage you with a little clip from Mark and Joyce. They're gonna bring some more insight about this season. Have a look. Well, Joyce and I would love to extend this invitation to everyone that calls Hillsong Berlin home. We're in our heart for the house season right now. And October the 18th, make sure you set that date aside, is our heart for the house Sunday. And if you're not sure what it is, if you've been in our church for the last 12 months, you're new or recently new, this is our annual offering that we really, as a church, decide to come together sacrificially. And we're going to believe God that it's going to help move our church forward. So prayerful, significant. Yes, absolutely. Defining. It is. All those words. It definitely is. It's a defining time in the life of our church. And so it's really important, I feel, that we are all prayerful about our role and what we can contribute. Mark and I take this seriously yeah. in our prayers. And um, it's been a blessing to our church to see church advance and I'm really excited about this year as well. Yeah so let's be all prayerful about it like Joyce said and really carry this season. If you need to know more information we'll be honored to help you with any way we can and let's really enlarge the capacity of our church. You know Heart for the House really does enlarge our faith capacity because what is it? We're looking to God, we're trusting Him and really let the Holy Spirit speak to you in this season as well on what you can do as a married couple, as a family, as an individual that's a part of something called God's house. I believe it is significant. I believe it has been in the past and I believe it continues to be significant for who we are and who we're becoming. So let's be prayerful, let's be fired up and let's have a real big spirit of faith about what we can all do in this Heart for the House season. So God bless. Awesome. Hard for the house, 18th of October. Remember, save the date. It's going to be a powerful Sunday. Yeah. And you know, as we get ready for the word, Pastor Mark is going to be bringing the word today. He's going to be talking about the church. So why don't you take your phone, your notebook, your one iPad, thing. whatever you want, your one thing book. But I believe God is going to bring a word for you right now in this season, a word that's going to speak to your heart. So be encouraged and lean in as we receive the word. Well, warm welcome to everyone. So good to have you join us today online. I hope you're good and doing well wherever you are and enjoying the company of those around you. And if you haven't been able to get one of our, our community groups across the city on Sunday, wherever you are, I really pray you'll be encouraged and that things are moving forward. And don't forget, um, we're uh, doing our very best to keep praying, believing God for better days for each and every one of us. So today's message title is called Make the Connection. Have you ever been on the phone talking to someone 
uh, you know, talking about something important or maybe you're talking something about something that you really want to share from your heart and then you realise you've lost the connection. Well, I've been in situations like that before where I'm going for it on the phone and making my point and then I realise, oh, it's disconnected. So you're kind of frustrated. You know, connections are important. Uh, have you ever been in an airport and uh, you have a connecting flight but somehow you got distracted, you had another coffee or you just kind of wandered off shopping. Well, my family, Joyce and my kids, always laugh at me because I have this habit at airports of wandering around and forgetting that I actually got a flight that I need to connect to. And uh, there's been times in the past where literally Joyce and the kids are at the boarding gate and there's been an announcement, could Mr. Wilkinson please make his way to the gate? <laughs> and then they'll just see me flying around the corner and uh, oh, I'm like, yeah, well, I got distracted shopping. Well, maybe you do that as well, or maybe you don't, but connecting to flights or missing flights, they're so inconvenient. And we've probably all got stories about that. But I think connections are important. And, you know, as we lean into God's promise today, as we look to His Word for our lives, I love that the whole Bible narrative deals a lot with connections and disconnections, with the main focus on the person of Jesus. The letter written to the church in Ephesus, which is today modern day Turkey, highlights seven connections, seven important connections for all of us to make in life. I'm gonna just mention them to you today, but you can download the card uh, that we've written down for you so you can look at your own time, the verses in the book of Ephesians. But these are the seven connections it indicates. Number one, the connection to Christ. Number two, a connection to the church. Number three, a connection to purpose, godly purpose. Number four, the power connection. Number five, the leadership connection. Number six, relationship connections. And number seven, the Holy Spirit connection. Well, connecting to Christ and His church is really what it's all about. And when we get these two connections sorted, I believe it helps us with all the other connections that the book of Ephesians points to. So why is our connection to Christ so, so important? Because our connection to Christ transforms us. It's His unconditional love for us that I believe that will always change us. Yes, we come as we are, our complications, our good attitudes, bad attitudes, whatever it is that we come to Christ with, good, bad and ugly, He takes us as we are, but He never withholds His love over our lives. And what He does is He transforms us because of His consistent, ongoing, everlasting love. So never ever doubt that God's love for you, my friend, He never removes it. If anything, God covers us with His love. He doesn't smother us, choke us. He leads us to a beautiful place of restoration. And I just pray that we would understand the power of connecting with Christ, not religion, not some image in the sky or some image on a church wall or in some magazine. I'm talking about the person of Jesus. When we connect to Him and His love for us, it's amazing how everything begins to change. You know, as a loved man, it's amazing how you can become a loving man. It's the same with any woman that is loved by God. It's amazing how you become more loving towards others. So it's important that we let God love us with the, uh, the love, the unconditional love that He has for every one of us. But then He says to us, that we're to love each other with that same love, which is a little bit more interesting. But with God's help, I think it is possible because He wouldn't ask us to do something that we couldn't do. So connecting to Christ positions you and I in freedom. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. This is what it says. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had the veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is the Spirit makes us more and more like Him as we're changed into His glorious image. How good is that? So the Christ connection deals with our future failure. So that's why it's so important that we connect to Christ because He helps us to overcome the fear of failure, which deals with the performance issue. Our connection to Christ helps us to overcome and deal with the fear of rejection, approval, acceptance issue. How many of us are seeking approval or we're trying to get acceptance from this person, that person, that group, or someone that we think is really someone that we need to get acceptance from? Well, Christ's connection deals with that. 
The Christ connection also deals with the fear of, I'm not good enough. How many times do we feel like we just don't measure up? It deals with the judgment issue. You know, I don't know if you've ever felt judged or you feel like God judges you, but He has put all, all judgment on Jesus through the cross. That's why connecting to Christ frees us from this feeling of not being worthy or not feeling good enough. So I love that Christ connection does that. Also, the Christ connection helps us to overcome and deal with the feelings of shame, the guilt issue. Well, there's no doubt that God can and does forgive us. And He has done all of that through His Son, Jesus, on the cross. So connecting to Jesus, to Christ Jesus, is a game changer for you, for me, for us. And I really believe it can make a huge difference as we move forward. Well, the church connection, why is the church connection to God's house so important for our lives? Well, if you wanna know more about studying the church, because even now me talking about the church, for some of you, maybe it can be a challenge. Maybe, you, maybe you've got objections, uh, maybe you've got bad experiences, or maybe you just don't really understand what the real truth is of why Jesus and His church is so, so strong and so important for all of us. Well, if you wanna study the church, it's called ecclesiology. Um, it's the study of the Christian church. And feel free to do that if you wanna make progress with studying about that. But the goal today here is not to turn us on to all into theologians, uh, but it's really important for us though to understand why we connect with Jesus and His church and why it's such a game changer for us personally and for everyone around us and for the society that we're a part of. So if you Google the word church, maybe try that one day, Google the word church, click images, what would you see? You'll probably see what all of us see and that is buildings because the world's perception of the church is still sadly buildings. If you go on Instagram, maybe search for the word church, what would you see? Would you see blue lights and concerts and rock concerts and music concerts? Would you see worship leaders with tattoos and long hair, short hair, pink hair, blue hair? I don't know what you would see, but you'd probably see a whole lot of things. And the challenge with that is, is that really the church? And I'm not saying it isn't, and I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying that do these platforms help us to see what the church is? If you look at Hillsong Berlin Instagram, obviously Hillsong Berlin Instagram is not a perfect account, but it's a work in progress. Beautiful volunteers who are taking photos and doing their very best to be authentic and genuine. But you know, on our Instagram account, it's not about the buildings, it's about the community. It's about real people with everyday challenges, with real challenges, deciding to trust God with their everything and move forward in a beautiful direction. So yeah, hopefully it's an account that is authentic, it's attractive, but hopefully it also gives us a real uh, representation of Jesus and His church. So feel free to have a look at that if you want to. Well, anyway, the word church means ecclesia. It's the gathering of God's people. So the church is people, not a building. I think everybody should understand that by now. It, God is, He loves people, not so much buildings. Buildings, we use them. Uh, at the moment, we don't have one, but we will have one in Jesus' name in the near future. But what I am saying is, is that the church literally means a gathering of God's people. It's not a building, it's not property, it's us, you and me. When we come together, it's the beautiful presence of God and His church. So the church is people, it's not a building. So connecting with Jesus is one thing that should lead us to connecting with His church, God's house, God's people. The world can't see Jesus, but it can see the church. So the church is here, I believe, to make the invisible Jesus visible. I think that is really what it's all about. So let's look at some of the things that the church is not before we look at what it is. I think sometimes in our culture today, we make church a little bit too much about me, me, me. But let me just give you some metaphors that maybe could help here today. I'm not saying any of these to make anyone uncomfortable, but try and do this with humour and maybe it might make you smile a little bit. But church is not a hospital. I'm sick and I need 
need to recover. And when I'm better, I can leave. Well, let's think about it. If church is a hospital, well, what do people do at hospitals? They get better because the nurses, the doctors, the health profession are working diligently to bring our health back and get us back to a better place. So thank God for hospitals. Thank God for doctors and nurses and all the people that labour diligently to restore people to back to better health. But if we treat the church like a hospital, well, what do you do at a hospital? You get fixed and you leave. Well, if we treat church like that, I'm telling you now, I don't know if the church will ever make the invisible Jesus visible. So maybe church isn't a hospital. There's no doubt that people with pain and brokenness, with fears or concerns come to the house of God. We all come with our complications. We all come with our interesting stories and backgrounds. That's why we gladly say all of our stories are unfinished. It's good news to anyone who feels like their life is over or their story is over. No, no, my friend, whoever's listening today, your story's unfinished, just like my story's unfinished. Thank God that can reassure us to keep going. But let's also believe God through Jesus and His church, we can turn our unfinished stories into overcoming stories. That's where we bring glory to God because without Him, I couldn't have done this. Without Him, I couldn't have overcome this. So let's all understand it's unfinished stories, yes, that's reassuring. If you've, your story has been difficult or broken or messy or complicated, but let's also turn our unfinished stories into incredible overcoming stories where we go, praise be to God because of His goodness towards me. So I hope that encourages someone today, but let's not treat church like a hospital. Let's treat it as a place. Yes, there's medicine being poured in. Yes, there's food being given at the same time. They're all metaphors, but at the same time, it's amazing how some people are being strengthened and other people are being healed. It's a beautiful picture of the church, and I love that. Uh, church is not a hotel. I don't know if you've ever stayed in a hotel, but it's check in, check out, do not disturb sign, room service, please. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever done that, but the thing is, if we treat church like check in, check out, room service, do not disturb, I I've been in church a long time now, and sometimes people do come and they come late and they leave early and they've got their reasons for that. But sometimes the sign is clearly on display, do not disturb. And I'm just saying as a church, we should always respect that. We should always acknowledge, at least respect that there's a reason why people say, do not come any closer. All I am saying is, is church is not a hotel and let's not treat it like a hotel. Maybe for you, that's what it needs to be right now, but let's understand that that's not what church is. And let's turn church into a place where people can come late, they can leave early, they can put a do not disturb sign, but let's make sure that it's the real deal, that people can come closer. People can actually start towards, move towards Jesus, and His church because it gives them something that they've been longing for, purpose, meaning. He is a beautiful restorer of all human beings. And I pray we'll build the kind of church that gives hope to whoever ends up coming towards the house of God, amen. So the church is not a hotel. I think it's better than that, actually. The church is not a tourist bus. I don't know if you've ever been on a tourist bus, but um, <laughs> Joyce and I went to Rome a few years ago and we went on these tourist bus where literally you could go around the city of Rome and hop on, hop off, and it's fantastic and I loved it. But if we treat church like a tourist bus, hop on, hop off, um, I'm not sure if it's really gonna make the church what Jesus intended for it. So maybe we've got our reasons why we do that, but I'm just saying to all of us today, let's not treat the church as a hop on, hop off tourist bus. If anything, church is way more like a bus with a destination. It's going somewhere. Well, Hillsong Berlin, we're full and blessed with vision. And we believe God's raised us up for not just Berlin, but Berlin and beyond. We're gonna be believing God to look East, Eastern Europe and other cities and other parts of Europe that we can bring the good news and the gospel and establish a vibrant, dynamic local church, but He's doing it in Berlin with us first. So let's make sure that we understand that if we are using a metaphor as a bus, we are a bus with a destination. We're going somewhere. In other words, we may not wait around for you to decide whether you're interested. And that's not meant to be unpleasant. It's just that it's way more a bus with a destination than it is a tourist bus going around in circles, going nowhere. I just hope you understand the difference. Church is like a bus with a destination and we are gonna keep going for it. So stay on the bus. <laughs> keep growing with the vision. 
I believe that's really what the church is. It helps all of us to get bigger and to stay with Jesus as we stay on the bus called Hillsong Berlin. Is that okay? I hope that makes sense. Well, church is not Airbnb, someone else's home that we use for our convenience. Thank God for Airbnb, for a lot of us that have used Airbnb. It's helped maybe an expensive holiday be a lot more affordable. But let's not treat church like an Airbnb where it's someone else's place and I'll just use it whenever I want. I think if we do that to church, we may devalue really what God has for His church. I think church, it's way more a family, a place to belong, a place that you can call home. Uh, There's a mum and a dad, metaphorically, brothers and sisters, You know, I don't think you really attend church. I think it's more about belonging to a church because you don't attend a family, you belong in a family. And I think that's really more the intention that God has for His church. And I'm not saying church should control people, absolutely not. It should be releasing people into God-given potential. So it's very difficult when church is controlling. I believe God ever wanted His church to be controlling. I believe He's always, through His own example, been releasing and blessing and loving. And I think that's where the releasing and the strength comes from. So let's be the church that honours the name of Jesus, yes, but let's have that big capacity that releases and blesses and helps see people, helps people see better days. So let me give you one more thought on this. Church is more like a two-sided coin. Uh, I think the true value of a coin, if you have a coin, it has two sides. You try to use a coin that's been defaced or devalued, uh, you'll never be able to use it. They'll give you it back and say, sorry, you give me another coin. Well, church is a little bit like that. Don't treat it just one-sided where I go on Sunday and I forget the rest. It's more about, yeah, we gather on Sunday to receive from the Lord, but it's also about community, being a part of something bigger than yourself. Your church is to be experienced not as an individual, but as a collective community. And that's where we do much better in our own Christian walk, by being a part of a community of faith. And I really believe that's important for us to understand. So let's not treat it like a one-sided coin or one-sided. Let's treat the two-sided coin as the true value of church. You know, we all go back to work on Monday or university or some aspect of life. But I believe it's important that we treat church not like a religious institution or some tick box that we did once a year. Let's treat it like the way God sees it, as a place to belong, a place where we can be planted. You know, we don't get to choose our blood families, but we do get to choose our spiritual family. So I think that is important to consider. Well, why do believers need to connect to Christ-centered church? Well, I think there's a few thoughts I wanna give you here as we uh, come towards the end. When you connect to Jesus and His church, I believe you connect with God's plan for your life. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9, He let us know His secret plan and purpose. This was what God wanted and He planned to do it through Christ. So you connect to really, I think, God's plan for your life. I believe when you connect to Jesus and His church, you connect with God's purpose for your life. That may sound similar to the last one, but look what it says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Instead, we speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of His body, the church. So I think it's important that we understand that when we connect to Jesus and His church, we are connecting to God-given purpose to become more and more like Christ, make the invisible Jesus visible. We do this individually and we do it collectively. When you connect to Jesus and His church, you connect with God's family. How good is that? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, God decided in advance to adopt us into His own family by bringing us to Himself through Jesus Christ. This is what He wanted to do, and it gave Him great pleasure. How good is that? So many times people come from different parts of the world, and when they come to Hillsong Berlin, they see Welcome Home, or they get to meet someone in the community, and it's a real great, great reminder. Ah, I'm home. And it's a spiritual thing, yes, it's, but it's a beautiful thing. And I pray we never take it for granted. So when we connect to Jesus and His church, we are gonna connect to God's wisdom. I love that. Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. In Him, Christ, lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Well, I'll tell you straight up, I've learned so much about God's wisdom, godly wisdom by being planted and by staying in the local church. I've told you my story many times. 
came to faith with no religious background at all, no church background, 23 years of age, got invited to the house of God and never looked back. Met my beautiful wife, Joyce, there and uh, made so many great, incredible, lifelong friends through the house of God. But let me tell you this, I've learned so much about godly wisdom by being in the house of God. You have access, my friend, to godly wisdom. I've learned how to be a better father because I've been in the house of God. I've learned how to be a better husband. (laughs) Joyce has shouted amen right there because I'm being in the house of God. And you know what? There's so much wisdom in Jesus for you and I. You need wisdom for your job, wisdom for your family, wisdom for your marriage, wisdom for life. I'm telling you, the house of God is loaded up with godly wisdom. There is access for you, my friend. You don't have to suffer sometimes uh, and by lacking wisdom. You can have the wisdom you need for all that God's got for you. So let's connect to godly wisdom by connecting to Jesus and His church. And finally, when you connect to Jesus and His church, you connect with God's ways. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, follow God's example in everything you do because you we as are His dear children. I think giving people a godly example is important, especially to the younger generation. We don't like the world that we see right now. Well, it's a fruit of something we've sown. I'm talking collectively. And I think if we are gonna follow God's example, you know, He's the one that has shown forgiveness to us. Imagine if we follow His example towards each other in forgiveness. There's so much about the way He has been with us that we can learn from and begin to, I guess, show that example back in the earth. And that's what I really wanna encourage you with today, Jesus and His church. He is invisible to the world, yes, but He makes Himself visible to the world that is broken and hurting and lonely through the church. You and I, my friend, are the church. Yeah, we know we're not perfect, but He is. And because of His love for us, His grace over our lives, we are finding better days as we move forward. So let's stay planted in the local church. Let's realize that it's going somewhere and we want everyone to stay on board and be a part of it. I believe it will help us to grow in large and to become who God's calling us to be. So I hope you've been encouraged with the message today. You know, church is not really a formal membership. It's really a heart issue. It's when you say in your heart, that's my church, this is my home. Well, my prayer today is that all of you will feel at home in the house of God and that you will make your peace with Him in a beautiful way that will help you to see better days. Yeah, people have got different experiences. Maybe you've got challenges from the past experiences, but you're here. Thank God for that. And let's believe that we're gonna go on this journey together and we're gonna build something that Jesus loves that Jesus works with and Jesus uses to make Himself visible in Berlin and beyond by the grace of God in Jesus' name. So be encouraged. Let's keep going forward. Let's keep doing this together in Jesus' name. Amen. And the morning that you rose All the fell and held its breath Till the storm was moved for good For the land that conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who'd come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth above Shall not kneel, shall not faint By His love in His name, in His freedom I am free For the love of Jesus Christ Who has resurrected Now let's sing that again And the church, and the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit
Well, today's message, I hope it's been a great blessing to you. You know, we talked about the seven connections taken from the book of Ephesians. But right now, I'd love to take this moment to invite anybody that's listening um, really to consider your own walk with Jesus, whether you've made Him Lord and Saviour, whether you've acknowledged Him as your Lord and Saviour. I'd love to invite everyone to consider that by praying a prayer of salvation right now. You know, the connection to Christ does change everything. It lifts the burden, the shame, the guilt, the weight to know that we can be forgiven of all of the mess and the craziness that sometimes maybe is in our lives. But I love this, that right now, whoever's listening, whoever's joining us today, that the presence of God is right there with you, my friend. And as you pray this prayer, as we pray this prayer together, I really believe that you're gonna sense the Holy Spirit and the grace and the kindness of heaven towards you. So if you're not good with God, would you pray this prayer with me? Maybe you've drifted or maybe life's just got complicated. Maybe you've made some bad choices and it's caused you to go in a different direction. Well, again, Jesus is here for all of us. And when He died on that cross, He died for all of humanity. He holds nothing against us. And so would you let Him come and be the Lord and Saviour of your life? Because I believe when you connect to Christ, everything begins to change and He leads us to much better days. So why don't we pray this prayer? The words will come up on the screen. I believe this will be a great blessing for you. Dear Jesus, thank You for accepting and loving me. Thank You for dying on the cross and thank You that You rose again to give me eternal life. Today, I have decided to follow You, Jesus, and accept You as my Lord and Saviour. Thank You for forgiving me of all my sins past, present and future. From now on, I declare I am loved by God, I am forgiven and I am a child of God. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Well, how fantastic was that? I really trust that this moment is going to be a life-changing, defining moment for you. Let us know if you can about uh, the decision you've made today. Uh, we've got nothing but help and resource to help you move forward. And if Hillsong Berlin is going to be your church, well, welcome home. It's great to have you. And if you need help with finding a, ch a church wherever you are, then we would be honoured to help you with that decision. So God bless. Have a wonderful rest of the day. And uh, next week, we're going to continue with this series on what the church is and what the church is. And I hope it's going to be a great, great strength to our church and to everyone that's listening. Amen. God bless. How good was that? Big thanks to Pastor Mac for bringing this encouraging word. You know, the prayer we just prayed is all about making Jesus the Lord of our lives. If this was your prayer today, congratulations. It really is the best decision. And we would love to hear from you. You can just click I have decided in the link below. And did you know that we have amazing resources online? For example, the Discovery Nights, where we can ask questions and we can learn and grow together, or the Because of Jesus Letters, which are all about our identity and Christ. These resources are all about helping us to grow in our relationship with Jesus. So why don't you take a second today to check them out at hillsongberlin.de. So there you go, guys. Have the best week. And I'm really looking forward to the rest of September. It's gonna be amazing. Stay safe and I'll see you Sunday. Bye. Just rhythm